Hello and welcome to MD Newsline. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Yes, I'm Karine Tawaji. I'm a genital urinary medical oncologist here in Chicago at the University of Illinois in Chicago. So I specialize in treating patients with bladder cancer, kidney cancer, prostate cancer, and testicular cancer. So ASCO was probably the, the best place for you to be this week? Yes, it was a really exciting time. We had a couple research studies that were presented in all of those areas that I'm excited to delve in more about today. So let's start off uh, with bladder cancer. Talk to me a little bit about what your experience has been like and some of your challenges in treating bladder cancer and what you um, found at ASCO that was applicable to your work. Absolutely. So when we're thinking about bladder cancer, we think about patients that have localized disease where the high risk patients have disease that extends into the muscle part of the bladder, thinking about the bladder as having multiple layers, the muscle being that middle layer. And we know that those patients are at higher risk of having recurrent bladder cancer when their bladder is taken out with a surgery called cystectomy. So when we're thinking about ways to improve the outcomes for those patients, we think about giving chemotherapy before the surgery. One of the issues is that the only chemotherapy approved is for patients that are cisplatin eligible, meaning that they have a good renal function no hearing loss, no significant neuropathy, a good performance status. And in the last six months or so, we've had the FDA approval of a new treatment, a new standard of care in this area for cisplatin-eligible patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer. And that is the Niagara study, which is looking at our traditional platinum-based chemotherapy with gemcitabine cisplatin, but adding an immunotherapy component called dervalumab, both in the neoadjuvant setting and then for cycles in the adjuvant setting as well with dervalumab by itself. One of the other challenges is that we do not have a good regimen for cisplatin ineligible patients in the neoadjuvant setting. There are trials ongoing looking at whether we could give treatments that could improve different endpoints for patients that are cisplatin ineligible. But this is a really interesting space. And then there's a lot of interest as well as far as bladder preservation because I face patients frequently that do not want to have the surgery to remove their bladder for significant quality of life reasons. And I think a lot of the space is moving to biomarkers to predict which patients will do well with systemic therapy alone. How can we move towards more of a bladder preservation? So there were two interesting studies that I'm thinking of that were presented at ASCO this past weekend with regards to bladder preservation and with regards to using CTDNA with that regimen of gemcitabine, cisplatin, and dervalumab. Mm -hmm. 